Welcome to the Contemplative Life. Three pastors, friends, and spiritual companions help us explore spirituality through a contemplative lens. I'm Christina Roberts. I'm Chris Roberts. I'm Christina Kaiser. We're glad you joined us. Hello. It's great to be with you. On today's podcast, we're taking some time to talk about our empowered voice. And we're going to do that a little bit by way of talking about some empowerment rituals, which I'll explain a little bit later on. But maybe to help us get started, I think it can be useful to have a definition of what ritual is. I feel like in Western society, we may have varying definitions or understandings, but they define ritual as an act or series of acts that are regularly repeated in a precise manner. And so sometimes rituals can be things like rites of passage or some sort of tradition or ceremony, celebration. But mostly how I feel like I'll probably be talking about it today is the concept of a practice. Because even though most of the time people in our culture probably use that word to talk about a marriage ceremony or their birthday plans, today we're going to be talking more about using rituals or actions in order to help us feel stronger, more confident, to help us live into believing that our voice matters, which can be a big deal because many of us, for all kinds of reasons, we either forget this at times, or maybe we don't even relate to that feeling of having an empowered voice at all. So in some instances, we may find we want to speak up. We may want to tell people how we feel. We might even feel like we're being taken advantage of sometimes, but for whatever reason, we just can't do it. We can't get the words out of our mouths sometimes. And so my hope for today's podcast is that we can offer some resources in the way of rituals that can help us to grow in that empowerment, not entitlement, of course, because it's not that we're looking to be the ones who push others around, but empowerment. And so with that being said, as we begin today, Chris and Christina, what's on your mind as we get started? For me, I find myself really curious around the word empowerment and how that relates to me as a female, me as an introvert, me as the youngest kid of five. And so even some of those very practical things in my life and how empowerment has been a journey for me of finding voice and getting over some of my shyness, introvertedness to speak up and to be that person. So I think I'm just orienting myself to the conversation, actually kind of hearing the word empowerment and what that means. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that whenever I heard you bring this up, Christina Kaiser, something that my mind automatically went to is like the distinction between empowered versus power. And I think power is something that people grasp for, that they they leverage for themselves. And I think we live in a culture that does that. You, you consolidate your power, you try to get more of it, and that's an act of self-determination, stubbornness, or some people might say resilience or or whatever it is that causes one to grasp for power. But empowered, I feel, is something that probably involves a community. It involves more than just one person grasping for something. It says that other people are putting power into you. I believe that we can do that to ourselves. One way that I feel like I've empowered myself is to really take a look at some of the voices that run inside my head that are self-deprecating or the inner critic, whatever you want to call it. I think silencing that voice has been empowering to myself. But by and large, I feel like empowerment comes from community and it's interesting that you're, you, some of the rituals that you mentioned, they're not just something that you do by yourself. It involves other people. So yeah, that's something that comes to my mind as we we're talking about our empowered voice. Yeah. I appreciate you highlighting that it's maybe both individual and collective. And I think for me, empowerment has, there's been a lot of inward journey for me in my empowerment. And I think that's been important for me to recognize, Hey, I need to get something from within myself, the strength within myself to find voice. And at the same time, I think professionally in a lot of my vocational roles, I've often been the minority in the room. 
gender wise primarily. And I think because of that, there have been people of power that have, I think, really helped to empower me to help me to find that voice. And so I do see a both and in what we're naming today, both on the sense of I think it is important, especially if that's something that you're not accustomed to having that powerful voice or showing up or taking up space would be another way that I might phrase that. I think it's definitely a both and. Yeah. And even as we're talking, I feel a little bit like, oh, I see this maybe show up differently in my own life at certain times. But even like when I think about raising my kids and seeing how personalities reflect there, in one moment, I might feel like that experience of empowerment is all about, look, if you're hungry, say you're hungry. Right? Even if somebody says you can't have whatever thing that you wanted it still is worth the ask. And other times though, like I think back to earlier times in my professional life where, I mean, there was this one particularly horrible moment. I was amazingly pregnant and somebody threw all these books on the floor and was like, pick them up. <laughs> it was this big deal to get down on the ground as pregnant as I was and put all these things into stacks and probably if I would have had a little bit more sense of self, a little bit more feeling of empowerment, I would have been like, that's not reasonable. We can't do that right now. But I did not feel that ability to speak up for myself at that particular time. And it was my community probably over the course of years and years of people speaking into me and saying, it is okay for you to have needs. But for whatever reason, I did not necessarily feel like I could state my needs and my struggle all the way through my life story. That's an interesting story. And I find myself even thinking about how culture plays into this. And so I remember when Chris and I were first married, and I think definitely as a Greek immigrant, daughter of Greek immigrant parents, the empowerment of asking for things and trying, and it doesn't hurt to ask the worst somebody can say is no. I think that was definitely instilled in me. And so even like silly things where, you know, asking for, Hey, is there an extra whatever with a business or an upgrade with something, or if something was wrong on a bill, I have no problem calling something, somebody up and saying, Hey, I think that there was a mistake here where, you know, maybe Chris, that's not your personality type or maybe how you grew up. And so you just let that go. And so I think that within one human being, there's probably aspects of us that maybe have experienced empowerment and that's a really natural thing. And then other aspects where we're having to grow and learn and come into that a little bit more. Yeah, I totally appreciate what both of you have been saying about empowerment. I think one thing that also occurs to me with this, this our empowered voice is the power of questions. And I think spiritual direction is something that comes to mind. I felt very empowered by questions that my spiritual director has asked of me. And I just had an experience this morning where I took one of my children to the, to the doctor's office and they have this part where, you know, you as a parent get to leave the room and they get to ask all these questions. And I did that. And then I came back in and there was some clarity that needed to happen around some of the questions. And so I asked a question and the doctor asked a question and it helped my child find their voice and be able to advocate for themselves. And so that experience is causing me to think about spiritual direction. There's so many times that I've told my story and then my spiritual director asked a question and caused me to reflect on it in a way that I would say is definitely empowering. So that that is one thing that, I, and that can be a ritual. That's a monthly thing that happens in my life. So I, these are a few things that come to my mind as we're talking about our empowered voice. And I think the aspect of the journey of it all, Christina, as you were talking, I realized like, even as I just shared this story, like now I would talk... Just yesterday, we were at a restaurant and I found a huge piece of plastic in my food, like a shard of broken plastic that I hid so as to not embarrass the waitress. Like, And then I put it in the to-go bag and brought it home with me so that no one else would end up with it inadvertently in their food. That's, I don't think that's a good example of empowerment. I do think that this is, you do the cycle and you do it again and you keep learning for a lifetime probably about empowerment, which I think bears witness and just mentioning. Chris, I appreciate you highlighting too what it looks like as 
the three of us are a little bit older and what it means to empower the younger generations, whether it be our kids or other people in our lives. And I find myself too, in situations where I was just recently with someone last week and asking them some questions and really felt like they were underplaying, like they have so many, not only gifts, but education to back up their gifts. And they were really underplaying who they were showing up in the room. And just by some questions, it was like, almost you have voice. Can I help you to see that you have voice and credibility and expertise? And what would it look like to call yourself an expert? Because really you are that. And so I think sometimes for those that are maybe a little bit younger than us, and we have walked some journey in each of our lives too, ways that we can help to give others that. And I do think sometimes it's just simply by asking a question or reflecting back what that person has said and recognizing, oh, wow, I think you are right. There is more to that. So it doesn't have to be this big dramatic thing necessarily of an empowered voice. Sometimes it may be, sometimes we maybe have those moments where it's okay. This is sitting with me a very heavy way that's calling for action. But sometimes I think it can be these simple interactions that we have as well that bring empowerment to our voices. Yeah. And I think that notion of, we had talked a little bit about the limiting beliefs. I think you brought it up, Chris, but it's such a huge deal. What are the voices in our head telling us and what do we just repeatedly tell ourselves and what are we even not aware of? So recently I was in a small group of people and we all took this time to think through what are some of these negatives? And It's easier for some of us and others to even identify that, which is interesting to know. Some people, they know the negative things that they say to themselves and they can throw it out there real fast. While others of us, we have to come haw around and we're not quite sure. But in this particular group of people, we wrote it all down and then we burned them, watched them go away and talked about the meaning of Uh, letting that go and that not existing in our lives. And then we did a whole different thing. We took a piece of paper and drew something that we could celebrate about ourselves. And I think that is this, it's very embodied. It gives us this chance to really name something and then to put something else forward into the world that's a little bit different. It's similar to the spiritual direction even, but something that we could do any moment technically, so long as you don't burn the house down. I think something that I also comes up as we talk our empowered voice, but I think it's also looking at where we see disempowered. We were at a, a gathering yesterday, a very sad gathering, but we were sitting at a table and there was some language that the husband was using that was probably not intentional about saying, yeah, this is what my wife is for. And I think it's in our relationships with others where we also help to identify where maybe some disempowering is coming from. We're we're not even aware that we're doing it. I'm fully confident that this person loved their spouse. Like there was love there. There's so many ways that we communicate that is disempowering that we're not even aware of. And I feel like that's probably something that should be paid attention to as well. And I think this comes up a lot as parents too. I think we can easily disempower our children and assume things that aren't true rather than giving them the benefit of the doubt or giving them opportunity to have that voice like you mentioned today in the doctor's office where I think it is within them in a safe environment where we can take risks and try. I think that's really important to name as well. Yeah, I think that notion of where did that feeling of disempowerment comes from is a powerful one and how easily we do it. I'm glad that you brought it up. And it is something I give a fair amount of thought to in my own life. Like, how am I speaking into other people's lives? There was another little ritual thing that I was doing with another person I know, which really came from a song that I learned. There was this song called We Are Weaving Our Lives. And uh, there was another lyric in it about We're weaving the light and dark threads of our journeys and we're weaving a basket to hold all that's true. And I found it so powerful. I know basket weaving is like a big joke, right? Like we joke about how you could take basket weaving in college or something. But in connection to this song, I thought, I wonder if there's some power here of really getting to spend more time with that song and use our bodies and utilize those words in the midst of it. And so we weave these little baskets that we could give as gifts <laughs> to hold all the stuff in life. And it was really strangely fun and meaningful all at the same time. That sounds very lovely and creative. And I do think sometimes having those tangible reminders for us is important. I This was years ago, but 
one of our kids was having some struggles with school and was just feeling really discouraged about that. And so we came up with some phrases that we posted next to the homework area where I am a learner, I'm growing in my ability to comprehend or to understand math or whatever it was. And we would have that as visual reminders that you can do this. And that seemed to be really helpful to have those positive message and those vibe coming forth as they were struggling with some particular subject matters. So I think that's important to have those tangible, visible reminders sometimes of the empowerment. I love that. And I feel like, because I see this come home from school, this kind of positive self-talk type stuff and to embody it takes a fair amount of intention and energy. So I just, woohoo, I feel like I want to applaud your efforts. And whereas we can look at that and think, oh, what a great idea. It's a whole other thing to actually employ the idea. So even as you were talking, I felt all goosebumpy about it. Thank you so much for entering into this topic of our empowered voices. Hopefully it will be generative for months and years to come. And now is the time we take a moment in our podcast to talk about what we are into. What are we into today? I am learning about kettlebell weights. And so I've been just really fascinated with weightlifting and training lately. And please, that that maybe sounds even lofty, not like weight training, like I'm some big, massive weight trainer, but I think just recognizing the importance of strength training, especially as I'm getting older and having resistance with my muscles. So I have some little handheld weights that I use, but I've just been fascinated. I watched some videos lately about kettlebell weights. And so I'm wanting to finish my research this week and then hopefully purchase some kettlebell weights and engage in some new weight exercises. So that is what I am into this week. Nice. It is playoff American football in the world right now. And I love football season. I love playoff season. And last night, I'm from Texas originally, and I love the Green Bay Packers where we live here in Wisconsin, but they are not in the playoffs. So my team in Texas, the Dallas Cowboys are in the playoffs. And my oldest has a favorite team that they they ended up playing last night. And I am just riding the high of the victory that my team were, was able to get last night. And I'm, I'm gloating a little bit, which is all in good fun. So by the time this podcast airs, we will have probably experienced the American Super Bowl. So we shall see how your team fares. But I am, I'm all about Team Cowboys too. this run. I'm with you. That's so funny. We had... A similar experience, but I'm probably with your other daughter, if I'm understanding, like, because the Bucks had a player that I used to be very connected to by region of where I lived. And so it was a like, come on, the game. And it was what it was. But the Cowboys played stupendously, except for their kicker and all those field goals he missed. Let's see. I am also into weights, by the way. I think what I am into is Scrabble. So... We totally splurged and bought ourselves this really cool Scrabble, I don't know, some sort of edition. It has a really nice bag for its tiles and the table rotates and we have been putting the kids to bed and eagerly sitting down to these games of Scrabble together, which I don't even know if I would want to do it with just anybody. I feel like it's almost a little personal to play Scrabble, (laughs) but it has been so much fun and we have really enjoyed it. Thank you, everybody, for being with us. We'll look forward to being with you again soon. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, we invite you to stay connected by signing up for our Foundry Spiritual Center newsletter, where you can learn about even more programs and offerings. You'll find a link to subscribe in the show notes or visit us anytime at foundrysc.com. Thanks again for being with us. We hope you have a great week. Thank you.